You're listening to the World Famous White Roof Radio, Wolfcast number 674, recorded on hmm, October 13th, 2021. Tonight brought to you by MotoringStripes.com and DetroitTune.com. Anyway, let's get let's get this party started, shall we? Hey, everybody, it's DB in Arizona. Brand new episode of the World Famous White Roof Radio, full crew. Nice. So rad. Uh, good friend Todd Pearson here at MotoringStripes.com. Todd, say hi. Greetings. Uh, the good reverend is here as well from Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com. Chad? Here and present. See, look at that. So nice. And, of course, we have Gabe. Gabe, say hello. Hola. Gabe is struggling because he needs a part for one of his millions of cars. He doesn't have millions of cars. One of his cars is broken, and he hasn't been able to get part for three months. <laughs> and I well, told him, you go to Germany, and just get it. <laughs> I, it just Here means I need dude. to click the uh, the trunk button uh, twice to open it, so it's it's really a massive inconvenience. The, the struggle, <laughs> oh my god, but the as struggle. I mentioned it is a nice way to 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 have to go to the dealer, which I and just hang out. Enjoy. Just well, Gabe, you can just I consider it. It's it's like the old mini uh, uh, door handle where you had to pull it twice. <clears throat> There you go. But you no well, longer I mean, have to. You know what? I we should address pull, that. I still have to pull mine twice. What are you talking about? I still have to pull yeah, twice. And I have to say, like, to me, that is a if you know, you know moment. Like, it, A, it's a very German concept because it's like, no, because it's safer that way. Because if you're driving, right. Right. you know, kids, whatever, like, it's sort of an automatic child safety situation. Um, but then Americans complained and now you just die. Yeah. Now, DB, what? The F56 doesn't do that. You do it once. You just I don't have once. to pull twice? No, you don't. Oh, maybe I don't. That's been gone since the F generation. Oh, I mean, okay. you can pull twice, but the door's open on the first time. Right. <laughs> the, second pulls, like, the second pull is just F56, for fun. It still annoys me that because, I, because I'm rocking the 2016 Super Legera. Yeah. When I get out of my car, <laughs> the boot's locked. I, I don't want... No, you can change. I'm in my garage. The boot's locked, and I have to reach into my pocket. No, you can change change that. that. Yeah, you can just go. Well, and also DB. That's going to my little my profile thing. Right, Todd. We got to get him. We got to get him. The OBD two. Yeah. We got to. We got to. We got to. You got to get. You got to. You got to invest. What is it? Basically, about fifty bucks. Yeah. Uh huh. To edit your car settings, we'll say. Oh, I'm just going to do that. We'll talk about that offline. Okay, and then the now. other thing that, that I've, I've been noticing as I've, as I've now, however long I've been on this car, is this car. So I'm used to the R50, the R53, the R56, all the R cars. And they're very, you could do a lot of crap with your right hand in those cars, right? <laughs> uh, you can, you can, <laughs> unless you're left-handed. That's, oh, sorry. That's the name of my it's third album. Left now. That's the name of your third album. <laughs> Anyway, but with your right hand, you get in, you get your car in gear, you tap the window down, and it's like mm-hmm. one smooth move, right? You know, you guys know what the move mm-hmm. I'm talking about. You go into first gear. Oh, it's a nice day. I'm putting my windows down. So you just choop, and you put them down. Hello. No. Yeah. In the F car? No, 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 no. Now no, I'm like turn a, the uh, start stop off. Now I'm like a farmer for crap's sake. Well, do you think about the time you hear? No. And then it, I have to think, and then I have to go to the other side like I'm driving a Chevy or something. Or, or. You just hold down the hold down your open open door button, unlock button, just hold it, and everything just opens up. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that next time. I mean, it's be, you know. But think of the time you nice. think of the time you save by not putting a key into anything. I don't have to put a key into anything. That's right. true. You know what's funny? No, I do. What's funny no, I about that though? Until I am the battery's now annoyed. Yeah. I am now annoyed because my the software in the car isn't fast enough. So I get in, hit the button, nothing boom, happens, and I'm, I'm automatic. <laughs> I am not a you know I wish I, I wish I didn't but I do and and I, I pull it back to go into D and it takes a second and sometimes it doesn't even register at all because I'm going I'm going so fast oh and because it is, it's all it's all digital it's now. All electric yeah. right that is all the electric. downside to 100 percent software sort of yeah. enabled experience yeah and so it cannot keep up with my like I've had that you know my muscle memory if you will whereas yeah. an old mechanical even an automatic again I you know. You know, probably oh, same yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. remember driving yeah, all the cars with it. You plop the thing back, and it's mechanically in gear. So off you go. Yeah, kind of funny how they take they <laughs> they give you more flexibility, and then you immediately want more. Well, it, it's interesting you say that, Gabe, because right now we're still at the 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 stick shift, if you will, that 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 shifter. It's irrelevant for what it is. They can rethink that. In fact, a lot of car companies have. Like right. Land Rover has a little yeah. knob that comes up, and Jeep yeah. and uh, Daimler has one similar. That's like a little turn well, knob um, that'll tell you what, what gear it is. But 
Yeah, and the new, I mean, you know, the, obviously the, the new minis have, have the little weird paddle. Um, if you want to, for all those listening, get a sneak peek of the new mini Countryman and probably uh, the new uh, mini hatch in some regards, go to head over to Morning File and check out the uh, the BMW yeah. 2 Series Active Tour. Uh, they are, there is a, to your point, Todd, there is a toggle. It is a little tiny toggle, and that is your gear selector now. You yeah. can just, between your no. finger and your no. thumb, no. your index... Just nope, nope. I'm gonna be hot. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be that guy for the listening audience today saying no, that's wrong. But he be wait <laughs> until you lose wait wait until Go you ahead. lose that, that parking brake handle. Dude, no, just don't no. So I had a no, chance to stop uh, it. That's not a modern a, a recent Tesla uh that has no that has no gear selector. It just goes. Right. right. It's one right. gear. Right. It's, right. it's on or off. Gear, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it guesses you want to go in reverse because yeah. you pulled into a spot and it guesses you want to go into drive. And I, in my very short drive with it, it guessed right. Um, and if it doesn't, you just basically, there's a little thing on the screen. You just go, you flip up, you flip down. Um, yeah, shit, stuff's changing. That's <laughs> it's, crazy. It's That's just quick. crazy. It is. Well, in all right. minis now, like uh, if you get an automatic mini, they've all got the electronic parking brake. Even the even the hard tops now. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a good question, Todd. I don't know. I believe I, they I, are. If you get an automatic, you get the electric. But if you have a manual transmission, you still get the hand e brake. We should. Uh, we should. We should invite listeners to to tell us we're wrong on that one because yes, I actually please. And, and also, I want to invite listeners to tell us how do you do a J a reverse J turn with an electric e brake control? You do not. You do not, right? That, am I correct in saying that you do so not do is, a reverse J turn when you only have an electric e brake? So, so, what in the Midwest and in, in where it snows, what we what use e brake for are e brake turns. I don't know, J, sure. J turns, not so much, but in the snow, e brake turns, I mean, I like live for them. Like, they are my, <laughs> I mean, I do it like going through the Whole Foods parking lot. Like, it's just a normal thing. And, <laughs> There is what sucks so badly is it cuts power now. So you pull it up and basically your car is like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And, <laughs> you know, it's like the flashes are on or not. But I mean, it's like, you know, basically the car is like bracing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're like, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm leveraging your braking here, guys. Let's look at this on the same. <laughs> so, Gabe, I just want to I want to roll that that whole statement that Gabe just made back to his qualifier, which was. Whole Foods parking lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I'll be here all week. I mean, I don't know why that's there's still a line there. I don't know why that's a that's a be, you know why, Gabe? Because I said it is. Okay. Well anyway. <laughs> that's that's an actual uh, thing. As Todd. That's what he uses me as an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> well anyway. Because uh, DB I'm said like, I'm, old, I'm old school. I like to actually go to the grocery store and Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's, no, I get that. We and that's and that's for a grocery store podcast, and we're going to talk about that. Sure, that's of course, true. we're going to we'll talk. talk we're going to talk about the next generation mini hatch is going to be split between electric and petrol. We've got an Ash Chad question for you guys tonight, um, and who knows what else we're going to talk about? I'm sure we'll talk about tequila at some point as well. Um, but before we get started with any of that, I want to remind you guys really quick. First of all, I want to say thanks for taking the uh, What You're Afraid of survey. Very cool. I'm only saying that now because those of you who took it, thank you very much. And it's close, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to have a link anymore. But anyway, thank you. If you want to follow the link, you can. You can go see what everybody else answered. What I'm taking this time here for is to let you guys know that if you happen to need a job and you're in Detroit and you're a qualified ranch or you know somebody who's a qualified ranch and would love to work for what is probably the most famous Mini Cooper shop on the planet, you know Detroit Tunes hiring. Just saying. Resumes yep. at com. Go over there. Chad could use a hand. He really could. He pays well. Get full benefits, the whole bit. Not only that, but you get to say, oh, yeah, I work for Detroit Tuned. And you know who knows who Detroit Tuned is? Freaking everybody. Just saying. You know, it's actually kind of funny because we had a employee a long time ago who was a part-time cop. So my employee currently got pulled over yesterday in a, you know, random running a red light, which he's like, I don't even have any idea. And the guy goes, oh, you work for Detroit Tune? Because he had the shirt on. And the guy goes, oh, I know so-and-so that used to work there, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, he still got the ticket, which has <laughs> been dismissed. 
But so, like, working for Detroit Tune won't get you out of a ticket, but yeah, exactly. you'll get a shout out. <laughs> so it's it's a very well known name here in this in the city. There so. you go. There you go. Well known name in the city and across the globe. I'm not kidding. If you Detroit Tune is the shop that you want to work at. If you're looking for a mini shop to go work for, if you're looking for an excuse to move to Detroit, you're a ranch. You can go work for Chad. He's gonna hook you up. Honestly, it's a great shop. You want to work for Chad? If I wanted, if I turned a ranch, I would have already moved to Detroit. That's how much I want to work for Chad. I'm just saying. All right? Go do it. Resumes at Troy2.com. If, however, you aren't mechanically challenged or you're mechanically challenged and you don't know how to work on cars, but you still need cool stuff for your car, go over to Detroit2.com. Chad's got all the cool stuff for you right there, including Space Saver Spare, including the one for the F56 with the five holes instead of four, and then all the go-fast bits that you want to make your car loud and obnoxious or just faster <laughs> or or safer, you want the roll cage, you want any of that, Chad's got it all for you over to TroyTune.com. Right? Right. Oh, H4, 25 millimeter comps for a sway bar. Chad, I'm, I'm going to be, we're, we're going to be talking F car mods in a very, very recent episode, very soon. Yes. I, I have questions. Okay. I have, I have, questions. I have questions. I have Everybody? questions. So I don't want to do it tonight because that's throwing you under the bus, but we're going to do that. And we're going to talk about it from Detroit. Tune I have limited knowledge, but we can we can make it all work. You know, like exactly. It's, it's just it's very interesting. The the new cars are all starting to come. Kind of like, well, what's your VIN? What car do you really have? Because some cars mm-hmm. it fits, some cars it doesn't. Right. It, there's a lot of very specific things that will only fit one or two cars. Where like an R56 or an R57 or an R58 or 59 or even an R60, they would all use the exact same thing. Like all the R50 and 51s or 52s and 53s would all use the exact same thing. Right. All the F cars are all different. They will oh, all yeah. use mm-hmm. different things. Mm. So, welcome to yeah, the BMW so you know world. Why that is exactly that's because they're BMWs now. Oh, because yeah, they, they right. basically are doing running updates every March and uh, what is it? September, I think. Is it? No, no. It's March and March and July, um, and then November. Yeah, we're we're we're. I'm teaching the entire team. It's like okay, if they are asking for anything specific, we need a VIN, get or a VIN. otherwise we can't get them the right piece because. Even uh, you know we're ha- we're seeing tons of of motor mount failures, which we'll actually get more into in the ask yeah, chat section. Um, but there is a at least four difference because it's a three cylinder, it's a four cylinder, it's a automatic or a manual. Different and which automatic and, yeah, and, and and exactly. Oh, so there's at right. least four different motor mounts there, and we are secretly behind the scenes not releasing too much information trying to come up with a different solution mm. for this breakage interesting thing. very interesting and, chad we're gonna have to keep us you have to keep us posted on and, all that you know chad we'll talk about that too in an upcoming one also but i talked to one of the mini techs who's been doing it a long time and a lot of them are i don't want to say misdiagnosed but if it starts to crack it's not really failed, but there's like some cracking oh, yeah. that you see that are like it doesn't need to be replaced, and a lot of people replace them anyway. But it's like mm, that's not like the the total telltale sign that it, it needs to be replaced. So, and I, it's an issue. Don't get me wrong. It, but. It, yeah, it's totally an issue, and and the person has to complain about it. Right. And a guy come in is like, I feel this like vibrant, you know, type yes. of vibration. Oh, yes, in the that's car. a problem. Just <laughs> I have that. It's yep. like. Yeah, your entire motor mount is gone, and it's <laughs> aluminum to aluminum now. Yeah, yes, that's that's what Which mine is, a is fun, right now. No, fun it's not. color or fun no, fun not. sound, I should say. Not, oh, yeah. it's not fun great, at all. great sound, great sound, great no, feel. No, not at all. And then, but Chad, my questions are going to be specifically just going to put these in your brain. Is I'm thinking old school. I'm thinking R50 style. I'm thinking what what am I going to get if I just just do intake, exhaust, and rear sway on an F56? Okay, we're not talking about that right now. We're not talking okay. about that right now because I think I know, and I think I'm not going to do any of it. Maybe the rear sway because I, <laughs> I think the intake, the intake yeah, sway bar on these cars is going to be like swing. Yeah, yeah sway, the, the sway I, is a, is is actually a, a an amazing update on the everything else right. is just ear candy. Yeah, right, I yeah. exactly. It's a, and I don't think I want my car to go. <laughs> you know what I, I? Well, it's so hard not to talk about this, DB. I know <laughs> because I've got a rear sway, I've got a rear sway bar on my JCW. 
So oh, I, it, I can answer. It, I can tell it, you. <laughs> the, 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 to me, the suspension mods on so, the current car are like, that's the shit. But let's talk about letters. So, so, so let's actually get into that. But before we get in it, let's do it. Just a quick, just a really quick history lesson. So back in the day. Me, Gabe, Todd, we're all from back in the day, back in the 2000s, early 2000s era. We call, it, we call it OG now. We call it OG. <laughs> that's how long we've been around. The number one mod, besides tying in the nut behind the wheel of all the R50 and R53 cars, was there's three mods that you did. Actually, we'll say three. And it was intake, exhaust, and rear sway bar. And then if you had an R53, you, you also pull. got the Craven Speed reduced pulley. Yeah. Right, so you get a little bit of extra boost. So you did pulley, intake, exhaust, and rear sway bar. Boom, and you did that instant race car. Right, so that's where we're starting from. That's where we're going from. Gabe, go back to what you were talking about with the rear sway. Well, and and, and, it, was, and it can be. It's a very quick conversation because Todd should take it from here. But you know, the, the reality is like you know the Cooper sure. S. You know, like listen, they're all they're all fast and fun, especially manual. Yes, you can you can increase boost. You can do certain things from them. ECU perspective, but from my perspective, tightening the suspension down what, what and the sway back. exactly and sway the sway specifically yep. will do yeah. that, and it is yeah. a night and day difference. It reminds me of the R56 in the first oh, few years really? they made it. It's All awesome. Right. Well, right. I, I, the, the thing that I love, I've I've said goodbye to most of my uh, my understeer. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, almost completely because the thing's flat around corners and and pulls right through it. So that's the, that's the biggest thing as far as the suspension goes. But now, the other one, DB, that... with the with the F car is I don't have near as much um, uh, understeer in this car as I had in any other mini. No, no, it's it's pretty good, and a lot of that's the electronics too that are, oh, are right. taking yeah, yeah. you around the corner. Which I think that that brings me to another theory about the JCW brakes. But on to the second part with the the intake DB. And if you're a fan, like you know, of a turbo car instead mm-hmm. of <laughs> either a non-turbo or a supercharged car, if you're a fan of this sound, pss, then get an intake because <laughs> you will hear that. All the time. Prominently, with most of the new intakes on the F cars, is you're hearing the turbo, you know, kind of the uh, the blow right, off. Right, because Craven's <laughs> got that really nice 3D printed one. They stick a K&N filter with it, right? And it's just like, oh, I'm a K&N filter guy anyway, so why not? But yeah, I don't want the. Pss- no. I don't want the sound. You're gonna hear the tur- You're gonna hear the turbo with most of the. Uh, it, it all comes intakes. down to the ear candy. If yep. you want the yeah. ear candy, we don't can do it. that. You know, but. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it comes down to price, yep. and if you're like, "Hey, I'm spending a thousand dollars in this intake," I was like, "Well, is that going to give you a thousand dollars worth of product?" No, nope, probably not. Nope, but it's well, going to give you ear candy. Spend that, I'll spend that money yeah. on OZ wheels before I do anything. Yeah. If you spend two hundred fifty bucks on some ear candy and you, re- I really like this. Hey, then it's two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty bucks. It's not a big deal. Yeah, Just I'm, I'm going to go back to the uh, H. I'm going to go back to the H Sport twenty five millimeter comp rear adjustable <laughs> sway bar. We're gonna just we're gonna do that, and we're gonna go from there. And I'm gonna do middle adjust on both sides, and yeah, we'll go from there. You'll be happy, yeah. You'll be happy with. Well, that. that's what I said. That was my setup on my R50. It was, in fact, it was that bar. It was the H Sport adjustable, and I did middle. I did middle hole on both sides, and oh my god. Well, unfortunately, H Sport doesn't make an F car bar yet. Yeah, yeah. Hoping that they may come through with that, but there are a couple of other F car bars. On our website, um, cool. which I uh, recommend, you know, any of them. So sweet. That's a great mod, especially if you're going to do track days. Yeah, or rear sway bar is is where I would start with anybody when they were like, "Hey, I want to do this," you know, suspension wise, or you know, take corners faster, you know, mm-hmm. because that will actually make more power realistically yes. than yes. actually adding power. We well, talked about funny, that. I'll have to dig out uh, one of those old shows because we talked about that with like Randy or somebody, how mm-hmm. the how a rear sway bar actually translated into more power on the ground. It yeah. is it is the cheapest mod to make you feel more alive. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um especially Agreed. on a track, by the way. Uh you know, with an adjustable rear sway bar, be thoughtful around how far you adjust it and what to expect. Yes. Yeah, but as long as you and, get it dialed and, in, it's awesome. And be thankful that it's adjustable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I always right. tell everybody, it's like it's the single best suspension mod you'll ever do, and it's where I would start with the car before you do any type of coilovers or any lowering yes. springs or you yeah, know anything totally. else. 
start with the oh. wrist sway bar and then go from there because that will probably give you exactly what you're looking for. And, and if it doesn't, then you're going to do breaks, and and this isn't going to be a break. Show. And it, isn't it? I, and and Chad, wouldn't you say it's it's kind of it's kind of like the mature, more like thinking person's mod first mod. Yeah. It's the thing. Oh, because totally. you can't you see it. You're you, doing, you can't show you don't throw on it. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't, don't show really it off. Realize. At the, yeah. Yeah, you don't realize exactly what it's going to do. And I, you know, when somebody leaves with a wrist sway bar, I tell them, it's like, look, die yourself back a little bit because mm-hmm. you're going to want to dive in this corner, even <laughs> though you know it can do this. You're going to get sideways. Become, <laughs> it'll become second nature for you. Uh, well, I've had people total their cars out, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, rolling them or getting in the gravel or doing something weird. <laughs> Dial dial yourself back a little bit. Yeah. It will become mm-hmm. second nature. You will know exactly what to do after about five corners, and then you'll be fine. But just be easy, and just be fine. Well, and and DB- yeah, and I think it, it also it also give you a chance to to practice your uh, dab of Oppo very <laughs> consistently. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I, I will say the F fifty six from my experience now, I'm on my second one, my second F fifty six JCW. Is this car is the most sensitive mini I have ever owned to get this tire pressure. And the Really? Yeah, and the difference the difference I in agree. tire pressure between the front and back, because I found this and this is my own final experimentation which solved my problem, is that it high speed braking. And I mean, I've got this um, this off ramp that I take from a highway, and you're doing 70 miles an hour on a highway, and you get off in an off ramp, and it's a long, straight off ramp to the top of it, and you stop at a stoplight. And a lot of times, I would get off the off ramp at 80 miles an hour, and you know, be passing someone or avoiding something, and you're you're shooting up this off ramp, and then you slam on the brakes. Well, the car would get squirrely, like back end would kind of wiggle a little bit at high speed braking. And I mean, mm-hmm. 80 miles an hour are in excess of that, so I'm not going to tell mm-hmm. you how much. But <laughs> high-speed braking, it gets a little squirrely. And I've talked to the guys and finally realized that when I dropped my air pressure two pounds in the back versus the front, if I was at, say, 40 and 38 or 38 and 36 front to back, that solved my problem. It gave me just a hair more contact patch back there where the car didn't get squirrely in high-speed braking. And it is oh, something wow. both of my F56 JCWs did the exact, they reacted the exact same way, which Crazy. is why I kind of like nailed it down to that's got to be it. And they're really sensitive to like tire pressure, you know, differences between them. And the beauty is, is that you just press a button on the dash. It'll tell you exactly what the tire pressures are. So you can change this and always keep an eye out for it. But this is right. my experience in driving it. It is the most sensitive to, you know, tire pressure that's very that's very interesting so if you do go ahead and and rock the aftermarket rear sway bar you want to pay close attention to your tire pressures and you want to get them dialed in just right yeah. to you know as gabe said to do the oppo <laughs> yeah but i think it's i mean and 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 just a you know uh quick psa in terms of your first track day tire pressures like if you, <laughs> oh, if you want if you huge. want the cheapest the cheapest way to go fast Tire pressures, and you know, tire just pressure. just make sure you're on your tire pressure. Yes. Um, but it's old school. I mean, you know, nobody wants to hear it. Everybody wants to like do some fun stuff and, and look cool. And I get it. Um, and yeah, hey, listen, you, you know can what? always get red. You can always get red um, sway bars. So if you really <laughs> exactly. want something, and, and you will, get, get some wheels will, that show it. And Gabe, let's just make sure everybody knows: is once you have that rear sway bar and you've got it dialed in, and you know what it does, you will look cool because. You will make a front wheel drive car uh, do lift off oversteer, which yeah. basically means you'll be able to drift once you figure it Dude, out. Dude, I'll never forget the first, the oh, 2007. First time I did that. Oh, so nice. The 2007 Mini Cooper S I took to the Dragon as a press car. Yeah. I put, I actually, I only had it for the week. I put, I put 18 inch wheels and <laughs> really sticky tires on that. it. Yeah. Just because I was like, I got them lying around. Drove it, you know, a thousand miles and that thing stock, utterly stock. And it and it rolled like it's not like it was like super tied down or anything, but the sway bar was so aggressive on that car stock. Like you could lift up oversteer all day long. And I mean, I, I was shocked they di- they signed off on that from the factory. I mean, I loved it, but man, if you were pushing and you didn't understand that was a reality in that car, like eh, it could be a little crazy. 
<laughs> well, and even better, back to the R5053 days, I know from mm. experience too, mm. is that the idea of lift off oversteer, what's going to happen too, is you're going to you're going to lift one wheel and you're going to be on three wheels. And the R5053s were very well known for when you mm-hmm. do that, it sets off your tire monitor, your tire pressure monitor, because it's a <laughs> it's a wheel spin it's a wheel speed sensor. And so what happens mm-hmm. is your three wheels are going at the same speed and you lift that third wheel by pushing hard into a corner and it spins really fast and then it throws a flat <laughs> tire light and it freaks a lot of people out. That's just the mm-hmm. nature of track time and doing hard driving. It happened on the dragon a lot. I mean and Chad, you can probably speak to this too. <laughs> with a, with a, a suspension that's dialed in and you get up on three wheels and you do it long, you know, if it's enough time, it'll send that the wheel speed sensor. Now, that stopped in 2007 because they used a, a different tire pressure monitoring system that each each tire had one. So it wasn't as sensitive to that. But, you know, now what happens in, in the F cars, if you do that, you get a drivetrain malfunction. <laughs> oh, well, drivetrain yeah. malfunction is the name of my fourth album, by the way, because <laughs> I... Uh, if I if I get in my car and pop it in, you know, go in reverse, pop it in D and just hit it because I got like I got to go yeah. um, immediate drivetrain malfunction immediate and it'll work itself out. Right, it it's goes like, away. What are you doing? I'm confused. It goes away. But <laughs> nice. Nice. I, we've been getting a lot of cars in with drivetrain malfunctions lately and not only F cars, but R cars as well. And yes, if you put an R car that has a bad wheel speed sensor, it will throw a ton of lights at you right um flat tire lights um every abs you know, all all lights. low all abs the lights, lights yep. all of these things yep. even though that half these systems really shouldn't be talking to each other because if your flat tire light is there and you have a sensor it knows what the air pressure is but the wheel speed sensor goes bad so it says thinks that all of your tires are flat well and, and it's just for the it's it's for the uh the lesser educated people out there who are not into you know any kind of track driving or performance driving if you will for most people it's like we're going to set off as many alert lights as we can because something's seriously wrong well yeah you're right it's it is it is a it is more you know conservative than right. we are and you know right. there's mm-hmm. there's a wide mm-hmm. audience that buys these cars and yes you know and uh we're here to help them as much as many is and so yeah, I think I think it, it it definitely errs on the side of making sure everybody's safe. In fact, I, I think I've talked about this before. I remember when I first had my first drivetrain malfunction. Actually, it was a it was a separate malfunction. It was a it, more or less what happened was because I was on gravel and I was doing mm, I yes. was being aggressive. The car went into a mode that more or less turned off um, a certain level of power steering because it was like I don't know what's going on, so I'm shutting mm. it down. Nice. And the, the steering wheel started to feel like a joystick. It was just, it was really, really bizarre. And so I actually, you know, I called 1-800-MINI-USA, whatever the number is. And because um, I thought, you know, listen, I it'd be interesting to go through the normal channels here rather than just like dial up the, the um, head of communications for MINI and <laughs> actually talk to somebody who, you know, like like a normal customer would who owns these cars. And, 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 and guys, believe it or not, like I got connected within an hour to a mini engineer in New wow. Jersey who actually works in the software for these cars. And he wow. walked me through, and this is open to anybody who calls about this. Um, Cause I actually asked about this, like, Oh yeah, no, I love doing this. This is this. We, we all, all the engineers have to have a couple hours where they answer calls like this and they, they all love it cause they get to talk to customers. And he walked me through the procedure and it was like, Basically, turn the wheel all the way to lock this way, all the way to lock this way, hit this button, turn to lock one more time, and then you've entered a diagnostics mode. And Whoa. then from there, it, it was crazy. From there, he actually had me reset something Clearly. and then look at something else. Yep. And and I restarted it, drove it a mile, and it was perfect. Yep. Wow, very so cool. So it was, it was wild, and I talked to him for a while, and, and, um, and he was just – you know, super excited. Like he knew, you know, ultimately at, I told at, him. I mean, at some point did you say, yeah, I'm Gabe Bridger from Motor and File. Yeah, he didn't want to do that. Is that But he knew Motor and File and he was like, oh man, this is great. He's like, well, you know, I, I, if you ever want to call me, uh, you know, to answer more questions, but he's like, basically like, we just love doing this. And, and what I found fascinating is like, you know, Minnie's trying these things because they don't, I mean, it's logical. They want to put their experts in touch with their customers for two reasons. Number one, they want to solve the problem. 
And then second, they want their engineers to hear from customers. So they're constantly thinking like, okay, so this customer had this problem. How do we design this differently next time? You know, how do we make it easier for them to sort of self-diagnose? And yeah, it was fascinating. And I have to say, I, um, I had no idea, which sounds crazy. I had no idea this, this program existed. Hmm. Nice. So, uh, that was awesome. Thank you, Gabe. Something. So let's just go ahead and we're going to put a little pin right here and we're going to call this our first F56 mod show. And we're going to start off by saying the number one mod you should do for your, for your mini. And this is, it doesn't kind of care what mini you have. If you have an F car, you have an R car, doesn't matter. You're going to start with the rear sway bar. If you're going to start with the rear sway bar, might I recommend the NM Engineering 25 millimeter adjustable rear sway bar bill from Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com. There will be a link in the show notes. It's a very fine unit indeed. There, takes care of that. Very Fine Unit was the name of my fifth album. It bombed. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a show title. Nice. Man, I, I, had a, I almost said a comment, and I'm like, nope, I'm sitting on that one. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get myself into trouble. I'm not going to get myself fired on the first month back. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's um, cute. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny talking about this stuff because I keep in the back of my mind thinking, DB, what you said, how there's so many new people to the mini community who are buying even secondhand F56s right now. Yeah, so I I was talking to some new mini owners, uh, this last week. I went to a hood wreck car show that the one of the Facebook clubs that I belong to, it's like, oh, we do this thing, it's kind of near my house, you know, and it's all the kids out there with the Subarus and the Toyotas and the cars without bumpers and stuff, right? And they put the big uh, drift car e brake handles on them and a lot of talk and lights. And uh, probably four cars that were on bags. Uh, and I, personally, I appreciate that kind of stuff. I thought it was cool. But all these people, it's like she's had a brand new 21 Clubman with a fancy roof. And they loved it so much. He went and bought a 2004, like already built R53. And But they've been here for like a year, right? And it was and it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. I'm not going to lie. It was weird. Well, the, it makes like, you feel no, old, DB. It makes you feel it old. Makes me, it made me feel old. Yeah. That's all it is. That's, and that, I guess that's what it meant. I made me feel old, but it was still weird. Well, and, and then that's the thing you think about it, for people who don't know or who are new to the show. Anyway, the four of us have been around the mini world for uh, 19 years now. We, we invented the mini world. <laughs> well, well, I'm in just all saying, seriousness, guys, no, like we were. In we, all serious, we, we did. We, well, so we did. We did. Um, and we also kind of were one of the first automotive podcasts Ever. We were, I mean, no, we were the first. Auto, we were the first. I was. Yeah. We were the first automotive co- podcast. Gabe, you joined us on episode nine. No big deal. We were the first automotive podcast. And but if you go back further than this, I mean, between DB Mini, between uh, Bridger US forward slash Mini, and, <laughs> and Ian's blog, which is the only one. Well, he he doesn't post about many stuff anymore. We started the Mini community. Period. And then Gabe started a club. I started a club. Todd started a club. And then North American Motoring came along and Mark started that, which was cool. And then mm-hmm. I got bought and, and went to shit. But anyway, we started and Chad was right there too with Detroit Tune. He was there almost immediately in the, in the Detroit Mini Club. We started the Mini Cooper community. Yep. 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 Which is, we always need to remember that, that, that it started almost not with us, but it kind of actually did. Back in the day, I was. Well, and I and here's, here's the, off my lawn. The, the sad part of it is we've been driving minis uh, probably as long as some of our listeners have been alive. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that that could be true. That could it, be true. Seriously, yeah. it's it's been 18, uh, I'm 19, 20 years. So yeah, nineteen years. Nineteen years. Yeah, since two thousand three. Yep. Right? or two thousand two. Technically, right. right. You know, the last day of two thousand two for me. So yeah, crazy. Just insane. Um, we know all of it. We were there. We we did it. We've been there. We've got the t-shirts. Which I, is, honestly, I have a blanket full of t-shirts. Which is why you should be listening to us, which is why you are listening to us. <laughs> Boom. Thank you. Let's move on. Um, I want to do a quick shout out back to Sherry, who wrote in to uh, the feedback of whiterefredo.com. Very cool, Sherry. Thank you. She's just happy that the podcast is back, and she wanted to give us a little shout out. So, Sherry, back at you. Thanks so much. We appreciate you guys listening. Let's move on, shall we? Let's go over to motoringfile.com. And Let's honestly, I, I, I honestly I could give a shit less about the BMW 2 Series Active Tour no, review. Uh, no, honestly, can I, I tell you care. why? That's the Tell most why important need, thing. Why do I need to care about this, Gabe? If you're a mini fan, that's that's the single most important 
article on Modern Falcon the, the past I year. The, I thought the Michelin, <laughs> Does it come I thought in Michelin, red? I thought Michelin using the Mini as the test bed car for the no the, no, 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 no. The, that doesn't matter. The, We've been seeing no, airless cool. tires. No, for no, years. Nobody cares about that. No. <laughs> So the the two series active tour, like, wait, what? Like, you know, this title is really long. I don't understand. I'm confused. I'm gonna go to bed. What 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 what's happening here is is that the mini club, the country mini club, and of course we know are on the same platform as the front wheel drive BMWs, meaning a yes. front wheel drive here in America, most people have all wheel drive. Uh, versions of those for cars, the, but they're for the nerds. Drive. That's the UK Shocker, platform. Your no. your X your X Drive uh, X One and X Two are front wheel drive cars that have very part time rear wheel drive engaged. Right. And that's very part time. That's the UKL platform, is it not, Gabe? That's UKL. Uh, right, it is. It is UKL too. Yeah. Um, my okay. my countryman, my JC of country. You're going to have this, uh, Todd, as well. I push. I push it, and uh, at times I push it hard. And it reacts and acts like a front-wheel drive car all the time. Yeah. All the time. It's a front-wheel drive car. The JCW 306 horsepower car is a front-wheel drive car that has helper tires, as I call them, every once in a while. <laughs> so those – so, so the Mr. The Mr. Rogers the of the, the – Mr. Rogers <laughs> yeah. of the wheel that's world. Fine. That's fine. I mean, I wish I wish it – you know, I wish it had a locking differential and, it, you know, it, I could I could slide it around. But it doesn't. And that's fine. It's, it's an awesome car it's anyway. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. But, it's fine. But the it's fine, it's fine. But the but the so great. So we have these cars and they're great. We love them. Well, what comes after this? Well, we've known a new countryman's coming. It's going to come in twenty three. Well, how about how about we see a preview of basically that exact car with just different clothes? That's what we're looking at here. Right. So the two series active tour is a what they call a uh, an M MPV, a multi purpose vehicle. It's very popular in Europe. It's essentially like a tall. Uh, hatchback, if you will, it's oh, not the, like an the, SUV. The the Hyundai Kona it's not like is kind of like that, and the uh, Honda yeah. burr, 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 is kind of like that too. No, no, nah, uh, kinda, kinda like kinda. the old Honda yeah, yeah. Um, Element. What's it called? H- Jazz, H- H- I think. H- oh, no, okay. the HRV. No, no, no. Those are S- that's no. SUV. The, the old Honda Jazz mm. is kind of like this. The yeah, Ford. Okay. What was that Ford? Um, ah, it's gonna drive me nuts. Um. It was like there's a there's a tall focus. Essentially, these are like tall hatchbacks. They usually yeah. look ungainly, and every American looks at them and like, why? Like, what, what contest did you lose? Like, why are you <laughs> driving that? Yeah. <laughs> right. and, but in Europe, they're like, ah, oh, this is very like practical. So it is a tall hatchback. But take yep. that away. Take the shape of it away. The chassis, the electronics, the engine, everything underneath is the new Mini Countryman. Okay. It is through and through what we will have in 2023. So it's important if you care about the countryman, if you're interested at all in the larger minis, this is what we're going to have. So if you want a preview, go to Motorfile and check it out. And so a couple of things that are pretty critical here, like, well, everything is going to be a mild hybrid for one. It's right. a mild hybrid. We've been, and we've been talking allows, about that since we came back. It allows for start stop easier. It, it's not that big of a deal. There's also going to be. <gasps> There's no e-brake handle. There's no e-brake and there's no right now I'm calling this. There's no manual at all in these cars yeah. oh, at all. Well, there's no so, joystick. There's no joystick there for a shifter either. It's a different. That's there's like no said, there's toggle. Yep. There's a there's 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 a toggle. And in the in the in the BMW, there are two very large uh, 10 inch screens, one in front of the driver, one in the center of the car um, that sort of form this like big sort of swath of, of display just, that's and there just is like no my Dodge pickup truck and there is no um there is no eye drive for the first time uh they've gone to full touch screen experience which i think actually think is a down it is down it's cheaper it's cheaper to use um oh, yeah. it also uses it's a it's a much less safe uh experience statistically speaking there's more cause sure. more crashes caused by touchscreen engagement than uh, joystick or uh, they call it uh, multifunction controller or MM, MMD. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. So that's a big change. Um, there is, uh, as I mentioned, new engines. The engines are tuned differently. So you're going to see more power. There's more torque. And there is an improved all-wheel drive system. The car is on a different chassis that will accommodate batteries. So eventually we'll see an all-electric version. There is a 
245 horsepower plug-in hybrid version. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And there is a range topping 326 horsepower plug-in hybrid system. Keep that in mind. Very interesting. And it looks like they've gone to, this is the first BMW I've seen with the the similar head-up display Uh, that's currently in the minis now. The pop-up screen that right. comes out well, of the they actually have this. They actually do have that in the BMWs, the smaller BMWs. Yeah. It's a much larger HUD, though, for what it's worth. The plug-in hybrids, uh, from what I'm hearing, could go as high as 50 miles on electricity alone. So wow. very different experience. Um, the BMW will have a lot of aluminum. So they're going to be really bringing in a lot of weight savings because of the batteries. Um, Suspension is going to be revised. It's going to have a new adaptive suspension that will actually lower the ride height. Uh, There's, there's a lot here uh, to dive into. So it is, like I said, more or less, this is the new mini countryman in a different body with a different infotainment system. Yeah. Two years early. Two years early. All right. Interesting. And including with all the different electric options available, Gabe, you think? So it'll be a it'll be a mild hybrid. I think so so there's the, no the way. countryman will be, not necessarily the hard top, but the countryman right. if the countryman actually comes in and, and, and as you are predicting, which I'm sure you're right, that it's gonna be this that we're looking at on motoringfile.com right now, then it's gonna have at least two of the motor options, which is gonna be mild hybrid and the three cylinder. No, I think, I think JCW version. Mild hybrid. They're all going to be mild hybrid. And the, the plug-in hybrid, I think Mini will have two options to choose from. I believe Mini will take the 326 horsepower plug-in hybrid and call that the JCW, JCW? E right. or whatever sure. they want to call it. Right, right, um, right. From a marketing perspective, I think they're going to take that and use okay. it. They may use the 245 horsepower version too, and I don't know, maybe that's going to be – the Cooper S E I, you know, who, who knows, but point, point being there's, there's some options there for many, as far as the drivetrain that BMW is yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of, you know, created and, and many is also, you know, a part of that. I mean, they take these things and tune them appropriately. So anyway, a lot of really interesting stuff there. I mean, there's a lot more there um, to check out, but it is a, like I said, a, a, a pretty interesting evolution of what the countryman is currently. Yeah, link in the show description for that one, guys. Make sure you take a – get a cup of coffee and or, you know, cocktail and go over and read through uh, all of Gabe's notes on this one. You, you get to the part at least where you can tell that it's turned it back into a press release, and then you can just kind of skim through that part. But all of Gabe's no, notes no, are No, you want to read every on. word. Of <laughs> you skim through it because <laughs> you, and, you skim through and, 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 and you kind of see, oh, it's got sport luxury and M sport models, and there's an optimized aerodynamic right. properties and acoustic comfort. And I can go out of order. Because yeah, you know what? Because I can do it the way I can read the way I want to read. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to the only other article that is worth. Well, there is a, there's another forthcoming article that makes sense to, to discuss. And that but. is to remind you to go back and make sure that you've listened to White Roof Radio with cast number 674. <laughs> no? So the next one, I think the next one that's worth talking about is the next generation mini. To be is split between split petrol split. and electric. Two cars. Yeah. These are so, two cars. And Gabe, before we talk about this further, there was a post in one of your Instagram pictures, one of your Instagram feeds this week, of what I thought could possibly be an electric Mini Cooper S. Am I am I seeing things? And are you just not going to say anything about it? That's right. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I mean it is, yep. it is, and they're great. And um, but it's not as impressive as the Rivian that was parked across across. <laughs> <the house>. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is for the uh, shuttle cast later. Yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, yeah, that's the I hate Facebook Facebook podcast. Anyway, which is yes. still an active build. That's the name of my sixth album. That's the name. <laughs> nice. So, but but I think I, it, it, what what so okay we just talked about the big minis. What about the small minis? Yeah. Yeah, so, what about the small minis? And a lot of is like, well, wait a second. Is mini like mini's talking all this game about going electric? I mean, how's that going to work? These cars supposedly are coming out in 2023. Are you really ready for an entirely electric mini brand? Well, right. the answer is no. The answer is no. clearly no. As much as I think electric cars are awesome and they will be great, uh, I think the infrastructure, the technology available, like there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people aren't ready for that. I'm not ready for that. 
Hey, and Gabe, and, can I just throw the? I want to throw this in really quick and let you continue. They're yeah. ruining the brand. Okay, continue. <laughs> that's a, okay for people. That's an old, old joke that goes. It's back. an old joke. Yeah, it's an old joke. So, for those who haven't been listening to us for a long time, every change that Minnie has made has elicited the the chorus of people saying they're ruining the brand. So the brand. since guys, do you remember when they changed the suspension settings in the 2003? Oh minute? my God, dude. So were, much drama. And everybody was like, yeah. they're ruining the brand. I'm oh, out. I'm so done. Much drama. The car wasn't and, even a year and, old at that point. Oh, so much and drama. Now, and now, so all those the of us who were like, had their car, like, it's actually a little message, bit more comfortable and it handles the same. The blew up, literally blew up. Like, this brand is dead. Oh. Anyway. Here. So let's so let's so move funny. let's move forward to 2023. So BMW and Mini Mini has basically said, "Listen, we are going to try to give as many people options as possible. So we're going to do an all electric car, and mm-hmm. we're like, dedicated, like as in like the version of this car. There's not going to be a ICE internal combustion engine, by the way. ICE. There's not going to be an ICE equivalent. It's just going to be electric. Therefore, we can create this this new Mini." on a skateboard platform. I mean, like literally like it's a flat, Mm -hmm. flat board with wheels on it. And that's going to allow for a optimal sort of like design and configuration, weight balance, weight distribution, everything. It's going to allow for also more efficiency, which is key for all those who are getting like 125 miles on a charge on their current Mini Cooper ES. So, okay, great. So that's one car. That's one product they're going to bring out problem is to design an entirely new car costs like a billion dollars at minimum so many is not does not have the money to do two of them so what do they do so they're like okay great well let's think about this for a second the ukl platform that the mini hatch is currently on it's really pretty good what if we just update that what if we just like you know legitimately update the chassis completely re-engineer the design, re-engineer the front of it so the crash structure is not as big, so the front overhang isn't as big, update the engines, and call it a brand new car. And, oh, by the way, give it an entirely new infotainment system, new technology, et cetera. And so that is going to be the new Mini Cooper G56 petrol-powered car that we're all going to know in the United States. Meanwhile... They're building another car that looks very, very similar that's going to be 100% electric with a different infotainment system from what I can tell. Um, A lot of different technology, and it's going to be dedicated electric. That will be codenamed to be TBD. I believe it's going to be another codename. In fact, I know it will be. Um, Mm -hmm. That will be sold alongside the ICE equivalent as the all-electric Mini. Oh, interesting. those two cars will be in the showrooms together. And will be completely different hmm. under the sky. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, go over to Motoring Father comment and read about it. And read the comments, too. There's some good comments. Yeah, it's interesting because there was a... Uh, I, I want to say there was an interview with Oliver Homer this week. It was floating around from, from Autocar in the UK. And uh, he basically was talking about the future of the of the brand and, and said that you know, for many fans, Relax, the hard top, the classic two-door hatchback kind of hard top was an iconic style that they're going to keep. They're not going to go, they're, they're still going to be that in the family. But other things that are coming think more along the lines of the Urbanaut and where they're going with mm-hmm. crazy ideas that are kind of going to maybe get away from that form. I mean, for the most part, the countrymen and the, you know, clubmen, uh, they they they're close, but I think they're going to start thinking outside that you know form well, just to kind of create something new and different and and you know pushing it forward as yeah, a brand. And, and I think part of it is I mean we and and, and I interviewed him last um, last year and uh, yeah last year link and, to that in the show notes. We basically yeah he said the same thing. We talked about it and he, he more or less said I mean listen there's there's. The, the hatch is iconic, and we want to evolve that. But outside of the hatch, we can be more aggressive, and we can do things that um, push the brand in a more modern way, which I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, the Countryman doesn't have a lot of history to it necessarily, um, and they're already sort of dabbling with you know the look of it. I think they're gonna they're gonna totally go in a different direction. Yeah. So 
where, where it nets out, and this is kind of interesting. This is a, a an article I'm, I'm actually uh, going to write shortly here. Um, I finally got confirmation from my second source, which I always like to wait to hear <laughs> from two sources. So it, it would appear at this point that Mini is moving forward with those two hatches, as I mentioned. They're going to move forward with a countryman that is going to be larger than it was before. Not dramatically, but it's going to be – it will be larger. They're going to move forward with a convertible as well, which is – now that's that's four models, which I think is key here. So then the big question is, you know, what is what is that other model? Because they've talked about five models. And I think I think what it, where they're I think where they're gonna go is they're gonna go with one other crossover that will likely be relatively it'll be smaller than the countryman. I think the countryman's gonna be the larger of the two. Okay. The the smaller crossover and the electric hardtop are gonna be made in China. Now everybody's like, oh my God. Like why like I would never have a car made in China. What the hell? Um, keep in mind, the next countryman, I believe, is going to be made in Germany. And in Oxford, they're going to be making the hard top and convertible. Right. So for what it's worth, uh, China has – we talked about this before the show. Yeah. They, Because of their government mandates to make electric cars, they have over 300 electric car makers right now. I mean yeah, they're, that's- they're producing electric cars. They're, they're driving innovation at a rate that nobody is in, in the United States anywhere else in the world. Not saying yeah. all of them are great, but there is a drive towards innovation there that is just not seen elsewhere. And yeah. on top of that, I mean, even Tesla, even Tesla has admitted like the 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 the, the Teslas made in China right now are of a higher quality than they are in the United States. So for all those worried about quality and Chinese minis, I mean, I I, I get it. Um, there's a pedigree to 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 minis made in the UK, but. I wouldn't worry about quality. That wouldn't be my concern. I think I think these are going to be solid cars. I think the question is, you know, what are they going to like be like to drive? And, and right. given how the ES feels right now, the Cooper uh, ES or SE, sorry, um, I imagine they're going to be kind of a revelation. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to add. And, and- I'm going to add one thing. One thing to what you said, Gabe, about as far as moving towards electrification. Um, I read a great economic uh, uh, backup to this, which was that car companies are going to invest, and this is a legitimate number, like a hundred billion dollars um, over the next ten years. So by investing that much money, it is it's unprecedented. It's insane to think about this that we're going to see things progress so quickly over the next five to seven mm-hmm. years, like it's going to blow people's mind as much as when Tesla came out and said, look, we've got a car that mm-hmm. does 400 miles on a on a charge. We're going to start seeing those numbers double to the point back like mm-hmm. in the uh, in the late 80s, early 90s with computers that just kept getting twice mm-hmm. as fast every year. It's like, well, oh, this one's twice as fast. This one's twice as fast. There's- there's sure. a couple of things that are happening there. I mean, Lucid has a, a car that does over 600 miles in a, in a, in a right. charge. We that, know that. That car looks amazing, by the way. Yeah, that's the one. I mean, in my mind, that's the one that's really cool. Um, the new Hummer, which is a very different car, is, is you know, potentially over 9,000 pounds. <laughs> it's a lot of batteries. It's, it still has a range of well over 300 miles. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so my point is, it's got the batteries to double the size of most Teslas. My point is, like, they're they're driving innovation there, but just wait until solid state batteries, which right. will right. totally change the game. I mean, right now, every electric car has lithium ion batteries, generally for the most part, which more or less are inherently unstable. They're basically yes. little the little bombs ready to yes. ready to blow. Just wait, waiting to catch on fire. Right, so you know, I love electric cars. They're they're they're, they're great. Just ask a Chevy the, Bolt owner. <laughs> wait right. until just wait until um, we we'll just wait until the uh, solid state batteries come out. I think there's going to be even more uh, innovation there. But yeah. I will say this to, to sort of like top line this. You know, electric cars are are amazing. I'm I, I've I have three manual transmission cars in my in my in my garage right now um, that I can count, and I love classic cars. I love doing it yourself like to me that's what i fell in love with there's something inherently uh, frankly like incredible about electric cars that it makes you feel like we've been doing it wrong for 100 years honestly it really does i mean when you drive them for the vast majority of people 
They make so much more sense. Once we get the infrastructure down, it's a no brainer for most people. Um, Mini's going to continue on with with uh, petrol powered cars for a while. I imagine the last one sold will probably be in the United States, to be honest with you, because we're going to allow for it. And right. they'll probably be one of the last manual transmission cars sold. I mean, this next generation, I believe they will have manual transmissions in the in the hatch. And, and you know, and they're gonna they're gonna go out fighting. But I mean, the writing's on the wall. Yep. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You're right. Awesome. Mm, okay. Stop. Um, so we still have an Ask Chad question, but we actually kind of answered the Ask Chad question already, um, sort of. Um, Come on. So, uh, some of it. So what I want to do is I want to make sure we just do it next time because we are, are at what, Todd, where are we, like an hour 10 right now? Yeah, yeah. 104. Yeah, so we're going to be at an hour 10 by the time we're done. So what I want to do is I want to do a shout out to Mr. Colton Rice and just go, hey, if you listened, you heard most of your questions were answered anyway. We're going to come back and revisit that first thing on the next show. Um, blah, 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 blah. Does that work for everybody else? That does, and I'm I'm gonna be yeah. at I'm gonna be at SEMA in two weeks, and so. Todd's gonna be at SEMA, which means I might be driving out to Vegas. We'll work on that offline. I will be um, driving all the new minis in two weeks at a, at a racetrack. Right. Very cool. That, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk more about that. Feels like a show. We'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah. Where are you gonna be, Gabe? Palm Springs. Yes. Mm, I might have to make a trip out to Palm Springs too. I mean, I'm just saying it could be a show. Good time. <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. So we're going to do that. Let me just go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to do a recap of Colton's email and say, hey, by the way, we answered all of your questions pretty much anyway. Uh, if you're asking about how often you should change your oil, pay and get it done every 5,000 miles. We're all every, agreement every, on that. Every five. Every five. Every five. Every five. Really? You're going to have to pay for it. Yeah. Every five. Every yeah. five. Every Turbo five. cars. Every five. Um, and so that's that's been our go to line since I don't know. It's forever. That the oil can't can't do it. It's the filter can't do it. The filter. See, there you go. Made it official. But we'll cover that more with the next episode. So we'll do that. Okay, good. We're back. Awesome. Gabe, that was fantastic. So that was very exciting. Now I'm excited to uh, electric cars, but I'm also excited about um, old cars. And I don't know about you guys, if you've been keeping up with Nathaniel and he got his old man's uh, MGB GT. Have mm-hmm. you been following his yeah, on Instagram? Awesome, yep. That's oh. awesome. We're going to have to get Love him on the MGB show just cool. to talk about that. Because, you know, you know, Nathaniel, he's like hardcore maker guy, right? And he's just been doing everything and making the parts and ease. And it's it's really just been fascinating to watch him. Yeah, that's a great idea. It. So cool. But we have to get him back on because it's just been amazing to watch. Uh, anyway, so if you guys know who Nathaniel Salzman is, you have to go find him on the Instagram and just read all the stuff he inherited. his uh, dad's MGBT GT. And he's had to just make it roadworthy again. And he's doing all the things and he's doing it the way his dad did. And he's logged it and he's got journals and it's so cool. Well, it's a car with like two or 300,000 miles. 300, like, 300, 300. He has many miles on that as right head on Roxy, 305,000 miles. Right. Isn't it like a 68 MGB? Yeah, it's a 68. I yeah. think. And it's something. gorgeous. His dad took care oh, of it. I mean, it's old, it's, old school BRG. It's and obviously, Car, and you can just smell it. Oh, yeah, it's so totally. Awesome. So awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great story. We'll have to have, we'll have Nathaniel back on pretty soon. Um, but anyway, I wanted to because we're pretty much done for the night. But I wanted to say um, I want to do a quick shout out. Colton emailed into uh, and asked a couple Ask Chad questions. Which Colton, if you didn't notice, we've already pretty much answered them. So he's asking about F car mods, which we took care of. He has satellite gray interior. He wants to know the best way to clean it. Come back. We're going to cover that. He uh, said that he needs motor mounts. Yeah, we talked about that. You definitely need motor mounts. I guarantee it. I need motor mounts on mine. You have a mini. I need motor mounts. That's what they do. And then he's asking how often he should change his oil. And ready one, ready two, ready three. How long should we change our oil, guys? Every 5,000 5, miles. miles. There you go. You're going to have to pay for one of them. Suck it up. Just go to the dealer and say, oh, you have to pay for it. And you go, yeah, it's fine. Every 5,000 miles. It's not that expensive. Anyway, Chad, gonna, Chad, how much do you charge for an oil change over there? What do you charge for an oil change? Um, we're anywhere between – it depends on the, the cars. Um, anywhere between 85 and 119, depending on how many quarts of oil you need. Because the F cars, some are six, some are five. You know, yeah. It depends on a three-cylinder, four-cylinder, those type of things. It can cost a little bit more, but – it's insurance. It's, it's cheap eight. insurance. Yep. A, cheap. Um, I skip, quoted somebody yesterday a, a engine for a R60. Um, Great motor. 12, what are those going for these days? Twelve thousand five hundred. Holy shit! Not cool. Oh. Not cool. Yeah. Well, Ouch. that's and that's at like 
cost. Wow. Because wow. he was like, yeah, we can give you this engine. That's cool. Like, you know, so, yeah, it, don't blow your engine up. I'm and just, then he had a, uh, he had a question. A rule of thumb. Spend 100 well, bucks every 5,000 miles. <laughs> Colton had a question for Todd, too, because he's got the mini cargo box. Um, and he would like to get stripes on his cargo box that match his roof color. And it's melting silver metallic. I'm just going to say Todd's going to tell you what he's going to say. Yes, we can do that. Motoringstripes.com. Yeah, it's it, we'll get something that's close to that color. It's it's a similar, but it's close enough. Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. And motoringstripes.com and use contact form. Yeah. Speaking of motoringstripes.com, uh, we talk offline. I want to get rid of my hood stripes. Tell me how to do that. Sit in the sun and start peeling, my friend. That's start it. peeling. <laughs> Not rocket yeah. science. Or, or get a or get a little heater. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I I just that's, I just like I just wanted to hear Todd's wind up on that one. <laughs> I, Elbow grease and time. There you go, baby. Motoring, <laughs> motoringstripes.com. You guys hear me mention motoringstripes.com all the time. Go over there, and I'm just going to tell you right now. Just click over to motoringstripes.com, and then go to the new products page. Just do this first, especially if you have an R car, and then you're going to click on the first thing, and it's the Mini Cooper round Mini Cooper decal. And that is to replace the Mini on your front and the back of your car. You can't see it anymore. It doesn't say uh-huh. Mini anymore anyway. Do it. Char- Tesla's going to charge you. What? what are they? You got these on sale for like, what? Six, six dollars? Yeah, they're like six bucks. Six bucks. Yeah, a couple oh. bucks. Big deal. Done. Done. Piece Done. Cake. Done. And then just kick back over to home and just start poking around. There's some all the cool stuff that you're going to want is over at Motoring Bad. Oh, just yeah, MotoringStripes.com. Stripes, uh, wire free to sort of delete kit. It's all over there. Uh, and then don't forget bumper strips too for all the cars. Just go over there, motoringstripes.com, please. Thank you. All and DetroitTune.com. In stock at DetroitTune.com as well. Yeah. Oh, see, the yeah, done. Yep. Bonus. Um, but otherwise, we are done for the night. Like I said, we are going to come back, Colton. We're going to come back to your email to Chad and Todd at the next episode. Promise. We have some a couple other quick programming notes. Todd is going to be at SEMA this year. Happening November to what, Todd? Uh, November 2nd through the 5th. There you go. If you're in Vegas, well, you might see me. You might see Todd. Just find a we, bar. I'll might, probably probably be there. <laughs> you know, might, and I might be there with them. It's going to be November 2nd through the 5th. Stephanie will be at GMC. So if you're in a GMC booth. We'll, we'll track her down at the truck, uh, the, the yes. truck section. <laughs> There you go. Well, isn't it all SEMA truck section? It now? is, and this is what I'm. This is what I'm really afraid of this year. Is Jeep that, section. Yeah, it's going to be all the off road and four by fours because the international. SUVs. Here's the thing: is SEMA is going to be much smaller this year because a lot of the international companies basically canceled. Oh, they are not here. They couldn't. They couldn't get because of travel restrictions. Travel they couldn't come, and so they've canceled. In, so it's going to be a much more truncated kind of U.S. centric show. Hell, we're Canadians also, aren't, aren't even allowed here until like the first of November. Yeah, so, we're Todd, also are you coming? Some of the U.S. companies are still pulling out last second. Right. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Are you coming F- as a FCP dealer? Euro vendor? just pulled out last week. No, I'm going are as you? media. I'm going as white refrigerator. You're going as media, so you got a media. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Got it. And then Gabe's going to be driving new minis out in the desert here pretty soon. Yeah, I'll also be at the LA show too, um, for what it's okay. worth. Later, and I'm actually speaking at a, a conference in Detroit. Um, really, in November as well. Okay, very cool. We've got a lot of stuff going on here underneath the white roof. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll keep you guys up to date on all of that. Nice, SEMA. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to try to do that now. I forgot about that. Interesting, interesting. Anyway, uh, once more, I want to thank everybody for taking the survey. We really appreciate it. Got all the information that you need. And you can watch for those changes start trickling out over the next few episodes because we've got some great information from you guys. And you guys give us some amazingly cool ideas. So we're going to take advantage of all that here very, very soon. Just, you know, stick around. Uh, otherwise, I don't have anything else. Does anybody have anything else? Gabe, Todd, Chad? No. Good. Sweet. Oh, I'm out. Then, then we're all out. So I want to one more time just say, hey, thanks. Very cool. There might be some pre-show. It might get snuck out somewhere, maybe over at dbmini.us because I'm not doing Patreon right now. So maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Keep an eye out for that. I'll post it on the Twitter. You know, maybe. We'll see. Um, or, you know, bug me for it. Let's do that instead. Ping White Roof Radio for the Black Roof Radio episode, and I will send you a link to download it because it's going to be something. Not very much. And it's going to be a Teams recording. It wasn't so very black. It. And it's not very black. Oh, it's kind of black. Because yeah. Gabe, was, Gabe was talking about racism. 
Oh, well, I was just, I was just, I was, no, just racist trying people. To He's talking about racist people, not racism. I was just, yeah, I was just trying to see if I, we, I could, I'm, I'm like, trying to get people excited to think, oh my God, we really went like totally black. And it's, it's not that black. Well, yeah, no, it wasn't no. really. Uh, or white. It's, it's going to cost you, it's going to cost you a tweet to at white roof radio. Yeah. Do it. And I'll think. Yeah, I will, I will give it away. <laughs> Senior racist. And that, that's that we can find. Yeah, but we are about, PC correct in the White Roof Radio family. Hardly, <laughs> Smell a little bit, correct. sort of, kind of. We try really hard. Anyway, uh, but that's it for this week, gang. Thanks again for sticking around. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing all the things. Um, this is the part of the show where I like to remind you uh, to do all the things. But I have, first thing I have to do is I have to make that funny clicking sound, and then I say. Questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead, click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the channel. You can also email us feedback whiteroofradio.com. But until next week, gang, or next time, actually, this is DB. Mom, don't. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.